Hello, and welcome to HUR at Home Inspiration. I'm Jackie Gales Webb, and I'm the host of Gospel Spirit every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. on 96.3 WHUR. And every Sunday evening at 6 p.m., we talk to some of the most talented individuals in the world about their faith and how it ministers to them and through them to the people of God. All day today on Gospel Spirit, well, actually not all day, but from 8 a.m. until 11 a.m., I was playing the music of a living legend, Richard Smallwood. And I got so many compliments, people who said that they could listen to Richard's music all day long. Total praise, center of my joy, same God. All of the wonderful songs that he performed with people like Shaka Khan and so many others, the Richard Smallwood singers, his love of the Hawkins family, and you can hear it in his music. And you can also hear the classical training that he has had in his music. He is a Howard University graduate, also a Howard University School of Divinity graduate. Uh, he was inducted into the Gospel Hall of Fame in 2006. He is a artist in resident at the Metropolitan Baptist Church of Washington, DC. And as I said, living legend. Please welcome the one and only Richard Smallwood to HUR at Home Inspirations. Hey, Richard. Hey, Jackie, how you doing? I am blessed because you are here. Oh, thank you so much for inviting me. I appreciate it. I really do. Of course, of course. I was so happy to hear about the tribute concert that's right. coming up. Um, it's going to be September the 22nd at 7 p.m. at First Baptist Church of Highland Park, uh, right. Sheriff Road in Landover, Maryland. And you have so many wonderful DMV artists that are going to come out and do a tribute to you. The host will be your former manager, Reverend yeah. Jerome Allen Bell. And you're going to hear people like Charles Butler, Chester Buck Burke, Jimmy Russell, Michael White, Mike McCoy, Patrick Lundy, Robert Person, Roderick Giles, Ronette Harrison Rollins, Sean Tillery, and the Vintage Gospel Singers. And it's put on by your good friend and colleague, Jared Sawyers, who I want to thank so much for arranging this this wonderful interview today. You know, I have your book. I've read the book. Right. And I, I, you know, I could talk to you all day long, but we're not going to take up that much of your time today. So I'm going to pick and choose. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Total praise, the autobiography. And let me tell my listeners who are coming into the chat so well. Charles Keener, Vernestine Strickland, Jacqueline Lindsay, uh, Sylvia Hall, Thank you so much for joining us. And please put your name in the chat and let Richard know how much you enjoy his music. But this book, this autobiography, Total Praise, you, you just really let us know about your beginnings as a gospel artist, your life in DC, your family, your, your, your health, uh, the, the um, ministry through uh, your music with uh, the Union Temple Baptist Church, the Celestials, the Richard Smallwood Singers. I mean, it's just just wonderful. So I'm just going to pick and choose, pick and choose. Okay. Um, <laughs> but before we even get into the book, let me ask you about you. I haven't talked to you before COVID. How did you make it through this whole pandemic situation? It was difficult, I think, as it was for everybody, um, because... Uh, you know, we couldn't really travel, uh, perform in public or anything. So for, you know, for about two years, I was Zooming, you know, uh, as we all were. Um, but it, it, it was difficult. And then um, in 2019, I had this crazy fall and uh, it shattered my kneecap and just sort of tore up my, my tendon. Ooh, so I had to, it was just a freak fall. I slipped on something on the floor and I went up and it, I just came down wrong. You know, my, my leg sort of tried to do a split, which I haven't done since I was 10. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, so at this age, that was not a wise decision to try it. But uh, so I had to go through surgery. I had to learn how to walk again. Um, so it was really rough. I was in uh, 
uh, rehab center for about a month and a half, and they literally taught me how to walk again. So wow. uh, it's been a rough three years, especially the past, the past, I say the past two years. Um, wow. But you know, God is faithful, and uh, He brought me through. So I'm, I'm Thank grateful. God. Grateful Thank for God. the faithfulness to be. Yeah, yeah. We we you know who are your Facebook fans enjoy your your Christmas postings of this tremendous tree. This tree must be at least sixteen feet tall. That you <laughs> into your home every Christmas, and we also love to see uh, the beautiful puppy that you had, uh, Mozart. You named him, and you we 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 watched as he grew and. And as you grew more and more in love with him, and and yeah, recently he, he passed on. He did. He did. And I'm right. sorry to hear that. Thank you. It was it was rough because he was 16 years old, so he's been with me through almost the bulk of my writing, uh, and um, you know he was you know he was just he was just that little friend that was just so truthful and loving and uh but i heard a lot that that he died right before i went to um rehab but we have a new one and um he, he's just a sweetheart he really really is his name is scotty and he is a uh miniature schnauzer uh and he's a puppy so you know we have the fight of him getting paper and chewing up. He got a hold of a Snickers bar. We don't know where he got it from because chocolate is poison, poisonous to dog. He just got the wrapper. Um, so, I mean, you always put that down. Give me that. No, I don't do that. I get him all kind of chewing toys. Of course, he's still teething. And I've got, he's 12, 11, 11 weeks. And I got to wait to six months before he stops teasing. So, y'all pray my strength. <laughs> endless energy, endless energy. I'm like, I ain't got that kind of energy, energy no more. Um, but he, he, he's a sweetheart. He really is. <laughs> I am so happy for you with this new puppy, Scotty. I know that's going to be fun just watching him, even if you don't oh, have the energy for him, just once watching that energy. Once he gets up in the morning, it's like that all the way until he finally just falls out in the middle of the floor or in his bed in the evening. And one thing is good, he sleeps through the night. <laughs> so <laughs> but I'd be tired just watching it, you know. But, well, Richard, uh, this this uh, autobiography, uh, Total Praise, took a lot of work, and you you credit Jared Sawyer with helping you to do definitely. research on your family on and such. Family, and yeah, yeah. beautiful pictures in the book. Thank you. Thank you talk you. extensively about DC. Uh, yeah. Your work and you're growing up in DC, I believe, it was McKinley Tech. McKinley that you Tech. Graduated That's from. Uh -huh. Yep. Went One of my Tech. listeners, Bernice Lane, said he's he's a he's an alumni of mine. I, I maybe she means McKinley Tech. Probably so. Probably so. But yeah, and, I went to I was I went to Stanton Elementary out in Anacostia, and then I went to Brown Junior High for about a year and a half, and then I transferred to Elliott Junior High, and then I went, went on to McKinley. So yeah, wow. a, lot, a lot of DC roots, a lot of DC roots. Well, it must be really remarkable when you see DC as it is today, how it's changed so much. It really has, because I moved out to Maryland, so I don't go down, downtown that much like I used to. But when I go down, I go, where did that come from? Oh my God, what is this store here? You know, it's just, it's a whole new city. Not the one I grew up in, in the 60s and <laughs> the 70s. So, um, but uh, I still love it. It's still DC. And uh, I, I can't imagine myself living anywhere else. You know, I, I just- Well, they I just have really it. started renovating around uh, your your father's old church, Union Temple Baptist, over in Southeast and Anacostia. Well, I heard, really yeah, I heard that. And they've yeah. also really renovated because I grew up on the H, uh, off the H Street corner, Northeast. So I grew up 12th and H, you know, 8th and H, where the old uh, miles long was, <laughs> you know, things of that nature. But uh, I went over there to a play at the Atlas Theater, the Atlas Theater is where we would go on Saturday mornings and stay all day 
watching whatever movie was there. And they have renovated and happened to see a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful play uh, about my, my late friend Donnie Hathaway, um, the one man show. That was I saw that. Isn't it, wasn't it wonderful? Fabulous. Really was. I, I was surprised that didn't make it to Broadway, really. I was talk, talking to the guy about it. You know, I said, you know, you really take this to Broadway. This is this is this is major. The writing is major, the music is major, and he is major, you know, as playing Donnie. Um, but he said, you know, he was waiting on some backers, you know, so they help you get a lot of money to do that in Broadway. But I'm hoping that he will. Yeah. But that's the first time I've been to the Atlas since I had been grown. And I was like, it's beautiful, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, but that that's really where I grew up, the H Street um, corridor. Have you ever worked with Donnie's daughter, Layla Hathaway? And, uh, uh, Layla is on my, uh, what's the name of that record? Promise <laughs> <So, laughs> I wrote a song for her called um, Praying for Peace. That's right. Um, and it's on uh, Promise It. The same, the same uh, uh, recording as Trust Me. It's it's beautiful how she, she has her thing going, but she does at times sound just like her father. Oh, she got her da daddy all in her. She really, really does. It's amazing. It's amazing. The genetic. Now you you worked in 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 a play, uh, Mahalia, and uh, was Mahalia. that on Broadway? We know we, we actually closed. That was the next step, and then we had some financial issues and. You know, it's a lot of it's a lot of work to put on a, a play, especially when you're going to work to Broadway because you got to get the, the right backers and all of that thing and the right money. And uh, but yeah, we did it for about I guess about eight months, and that was with uh, Jennifer Holiday played uh, Mahalia, and people the smallest sinners were in it. Uh, Lynette Hawkins Stevens was in it. Uh, so many great gifts were in that. that that's one of the most ta talented groups of individuals that I've worked. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it, it was a wonderful time. That was like 80, I think it was 87, 86, 87, somewhere around there. Well, you know, the book is full of great stories about the play and several other things. And one thing that stood out to me uh, was the, uh, it was in a chapter called Lessons Learned. And you talked about how when you were younger, uh, you were in a program with James Cleveland and, and performed an arrangement of the Lord's Prayer. And then you came back to D.C. and heard legendary D.C. disc jockey Cal Hackett playing a song, The Lord's Prayer, with your arrangement. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't, I don't want to accuse the wrong person. It was an arrangement of the Lord's Prayer, but it wasn't okay. my arrangement. Uh, oh, I see. We went out, uh, the gospel, uh, how you raised the choir, James Cleveland invited us to go to LA after he heard us. And I think that was 1970. And I guess about 50 or 60 of us went out there. It was, we were all just amazed because first of all, that was James Cleveland. You know, so many great famous people from the LA area came out to, to the um, concerts. We had a concert each night like at different churches. Uh, and we sang this arrangement of the Lord's Prayer, this, this particular arrangement, I had written for the gospel choir and we would always open up with it. Like we opened up with it and, uh, you know, people really, really liked it. And people even started requesting the second or third night. Did, Can you sing that Lord's Prayer song, you know? So it was, you know, it's sort of a hit, I guess, out there. And I got back here and Brother Cal Hackett was on uh, WST and uh, all of a sudden I heard the music to my Lord's Prayer, and whoever, well, I know who it was, I'm not going to say, but uh, I almost said it in the, in, the, in the book, I said, no, I'm not going to, because they're not here anymore, so I'm, just, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that, but I was, I was an angry young person, because, you know, I'm thinking, this is gospel music, everybody is fair, everybody treats you right, you're a newcomer, they'll, you know, treat, you know, reach out with love, and they had their name on the label, arranged by, on the label, that same person, music by that same person. And uh, I was a school, I was still a student at Howard and I had no money. So I went to a neighborhood uh, um, attorney and 
and showed it to him, let him hear it. And he said, first thing he said to me, so where's your copyright form? And I said, what is that? I didn't know. I didn't know any of that. I, this was new to me. I just wanted to, I just wanted to sing. You know, I, I didn't know anything about the business. And he explained to me about it has to be copyrighted, be your word against his word, unless you have some kind of concrete proof. Judge, a judge will probably, you know, um, believe him. And I hadn't sent a, a copyright uh, um, form in nothing because I just didn't know about it. So that was my first lesson in the music business. Don't wow. trust nobody. <laughs> And that's what I came up with. I think I was probably 19, something like that. So that was a good well, lesson. I, I came to lesson. Washington, D.C. To, to help start a radio station called WYCB. We're your community broadcasters Absolutely. in 1978. And for the first year or so, it was a message music station. It played the OJ. Okay. You got a message in your music. Right, and then right. the more we mixed in gospel music, all of a sudden it became a 24-hour gospel station. Absolutely. And I remember the first time uh, I received a Richard Smallwood album. I know that we were playing the Union Temple Young Adult Choir before right. that. But when when I got that album and you were all decked out in the tux, whatever, with the piano, <laughs> and the, and the girls were all fashionistas and look, I'm like, and you all were kind of my age. I'm like, oh wow! And then I heard Dottie Jones sing, "I Love the Lord." Oh my uh -huh. goodness. So you know I was playing it like crazy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was, that was 1983 or 82, something like that. The first record. Yeah. Just phenomenal. And and what, what's also phenomenal about you, not only you know how God ministers through your music, but your classical training comes through. And that's right. definitely unique in the gospel industry. So so you kind of classed us up there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I really was training at how to be a classical pianist, but gospel was always there. I mean, it was just something I could not get away from. You know, it's just like there was a magnet just pulling me back to that genre of music uh, because it's what I grew up listening to. I grew up listening to classical and gospel. That's a crazy <laughs> combination of genres. You know, nobody was really doing that. So um, it was uh, it was quite a uh, quite a revelation, and my and my um, my um, teacher, my piano teacher, the late Dr. Um, Thomas Kerr, um, told me he, he would be uh, he'd be teaching me classical pieces, and he would say stuff like, "Richard, you know that little cadenza, or that little passage you played in in your um, Chopin or something like that. You could use that same thing in the gospel." I said, you can? He said, there's no reason why you can't. And you know, that's where that whole classical thing came from. Because that was right down my era because you know that that's what I listened to. Coming up was gospel, um, classical, Broadway, a uh, little bit of jazz. Um, uh, because my, my stepdad, who was a pastor, wouldn't allow gospel, I wouldn't allow secular. So I would sneak the the, the secular um records in and take the volume down really really low and once he didn't say anything i started turning it up you know little by little, little by little and by within four or five months that, that secular music motown and everybody aretha everybody else was was just as loud as my gospels and the david sisters and martin singers and all those other folk so yeah yeah i grew up listening to it all so i think i was influenced by so many different jobs. And I, I praise God for my mother, who was very instrumental in, in um, exposing me to all genres of music, you know, taking me to classical concerts. And then when the award singers were in concerts, she'd take me there. You know, anything that, that was musical that she considered, you know, good, good music, she would take me to see. And that's how that whole thing combined even more, even before I got to Howard. Because uh, of her her love for me and her love for what I did in terms of music and really wanted to see me be the best that I could be, you know, in in my music, you know. So, uh, you know, when you look back, there were so many people all along the way who were guiding me, and I didn't know where they were guiding me. 
They might they may have known where they were guiding me, but they were guiding me to who I became. I've got music teachers and you know all kind of people in my life. Uh, you know, Roberta Flack was my eighth grade music teacher. Um, you know, when Donnie uh, was in school with me, he was a senior when I was a freshman. He taught me so many things. He's like, why don't you use this? I was like, oh, we allowed? Because you know, I came from the era, if it got too bluesy or too jazzy, they would say, stop playing that rock and roll, boy. You know, and I just loved music. If it was good, I just wanted to play it, you know. And so there were people like that all along who just inspired me. And I owe them so much. Some of them, thank God, are still here, but a lot of them are gone. But I'm so grateful. It's, 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 it's ironic the way that God puts people in your life. And you don't know why he's putting them there. But he had a plan, you know, that I didn't know of. I, I'm doing what I've always wanted to do. But I never knew that I would realize that. So he was preparing me all the, all the way from, from a child, from a five-year-old who had a record player with the 78s on it, you know. And my biggest gift was somebody to, to buy me a record. Money wow. was nothing. It was, it was about buy me the latest record by so-and-so and so, you know. Or my mom would go. They used to, um, if you go to the supermarket, you could get, these classical albums um, for real, real cheap, like a dollar or something like that. And she didn't know what the, what the names of them were. She just bring them home to me, and I would just fall in love. So I go, I go from gospel to the, um, um, the classical back, and then uh, she worked for a lady whose husband used to be one of the presidents of uh, Columbia Records. Mm. And I would do, I would go to work with Mama. And get in front of that lady's um, record record player and play all these, you know, the sound of music and um, Camelot and all these different, you know, uh, um, plays that I never got to see. But in my mind, I, I would imagine what they looked like, and I knew all those songs backwards. I could play them, I could sing them, you know. But it was again God putting me in certain places um, to help me become who he wanted me to be. Well, one of your most famous compositions, I remember the story that you told that, and forgive me, I'm not a musician, so I don't know musical terms. It had something to do with the key of D, capital D and small D. You, there was an instance when you were younger and you were put oh, in a position to play in that and key, and that key. Yeah. but later on, total praise was in that, was key. that key. that I could play <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I used to play for the uh, the uh, the Washington Washington was it Washington D.C. Baptist Convention Choir. The late <clears throat> Reverend Cleavon Derrick, who wrote "Just a Little Talk with Jesus," um, he was my pastor then, and um, we did all kinds of songs. We did anthems, we did hymns, we did gospel, and it was this one uh, anthem that I could not get that key right to save my life, and I was stumbling all over. And his wife was the major pianist, and I would play the organ. And that particular night, she wasn't there. He said, okay, Richard, come over here and play this song for me. I was like, oh, Lord, have mercy. And when I tell you, it was a disaster. I mean, disaster of the highest magnitude. So finally, he said, all right, son, but we'll, we'll, we'll go with that next week when this there is to see. I, I could have gone under the pew, <laughs> under the piano bench. But I tell you what, when I came back that next week, I knew D flat backwards, you know, the key of D flat. And uh, and it wasn't, it was recently that I looked back and I said, my God, total praise is in D flat. That was a key that I was terrified of. Oh and, my goodness. Uh huh. Yeah. Wow. And I, See, that's well, God, God works wonders, you know? He does. He really does. Prepare, well, he was preparing you for total praise way back yeah. then. <laughs> and I didn't even know, I had no clue. So um, you're very open in the book about dealing with depression. And I remember that you were very open to speak to people about the fact that there's no sin in seeking help, right. counseling. And, and I want to thank you for that. Uh, you also were very open in the book about the family secret, how oh, yeah. one day your mother called you and told you that your father, the man that you thought was your father, was not your father. Right. Right. That's traumatic. You it know? is traumatic. Vision and I, we were on our way to, uh, I think it was somewhere in Ohio, 
and I had to run by the store and get some medication, the pharmacy run by some, uh, get some medication. And mom called and uh, she was just, you know, just sort of going like rambling and sort of, I was like, why is she rambling like this? I guess she was trying to get up her nerve. And so she started talking and something about um, my father. And I said, well, um, thinking Smallwood, you know, and uh, she said to me in, I've got the exact words to me that um, she and Smallwood were never intimate. And I said, well, y'all had to be intimate one time because I'm here. And she said, he's not your father. But I tell you, I've never been so shocked in my life. Although, you know, you have to give credit uh, to kids because kids are very intelligent. They're intuitive. And sometimes you know something is wrong, but you just can't put your hands on it. And that's what, you know, what I was with him. We were never close. He was physically abusive. And uh, something was just like not right. And I couldn't put my hand on it. And I looked like nobody in his family. He turned to my mother's family. Either you could be my mother, my brother, or my sister. We all look so much alike, you know. And uh, so it was a lot with that, you know. And uh, even when I wrote about it, I thought about it. Do I really want to say this? And I talked to a lot of my friends. They said, Richard, be real. Because you don't know who is going through the same thing. Who has gone through. And it's, fun it's funny how... People think that certain people who do certain, you know, in, in the arts or something like that, they don't have any problems or anything like that. And I did, and we found out that uh, my father's really my cousin. And uh, my two, well, we thought they were my cousin. We we're really, really, really close. Um, they're younger than me. Uh, one is 12 years younger than me, the other is um, 10 years younger than me. And, um, we came up, they, they lived in D.C. when they were little tykes, little, you know, little baby kids. We would always go over there and um, they were my cousins, you know. And so their mother, who was very close to my mother, called me and said, do you want to know who your father really is? I was like, oh, Lord, here we go again. I was like, I think. And she said, your father was my husband. Robert, who I thought was my second cousin. Mm. So, but we were always so, we were already so close, and I think my brothers and my family were afraid of how I would accept it, you know. But I was like, we've been kin folks since y'all been born, you know. So I mean, and people it's really funny because they they come to everything that I do, you know, in the area, and uh, everybody kept saying. Y'all look like brothers. I was like, well, no, we, you know, I'm thinking <laughs> you're double cousins. I'm really double cousin. Somebody sent me a picture of them and their double cousin and said, okay, this is my double cousin. This is who you say is your double cousin. We don't look anything alike. Y'all do, you know, and uh, so that's how I found out. Of course, it, just, it didn't do anything to make us closer, but I was this old. I was, I was still in my 60s. When, when I got the information about it, so it, it took some, it took some getting used to. It. Thank God I was always already in therapy, so <laughs> that sort of helped me get through it, you know. And do you know what the catalyst was for your mother to tell you at that time? Had something I think, happened? I think she thought she wouldn't be here much longer, and because uh, this was maybe. Maybe three years before she passed. It may have been shorter than that. And um, I just think she she um, she just felt she wasn't going to be here much longer, and she may as well tell me the bulk the bulk of it because she never told me exactly who it was. She just said Smallwood was it. it was it was my brother's uh, mother. Who you know told me? And she said when she married into the family, I think she married into our family when I was about seven or eight. She said my grandmother, no, my great grandmother took her aside and told her. Oh my goodness! Uh huh. So did the cousins that well the the ones that you the thought brothers, were cousins? 
did they know before you did or you all found out at once they knew they knew and wow she but everybody's afraid to tell me because they just didn't know you know how i was going to accept it uh when i turn away and my my older brother said uh i would rather us still stay close and and him not know than for him to like, you know, just desert us and leave us, which I would have never done, you know, but you just don't know how people are going to react and stuff like that. Right, it definitely right. was a shock. You know, it was definitely right. a shock. So, uh, um, that it was turned quite out good. beautifully. That, that's that's, it that's so really turned out good. Yeah. My, yeah. Uh, uh, Dale um, Atterbury, who sings with Vision, he, he said, he said, Richard, I used to wonder because when we sing somewhere, he said they were all there on the first two rows. And he said, they roll like brothers and sisters or something as opposed to cousins, you know, and they, they look at us and say, my God, you all look like, uh, one, of, one of my brothers was downtown and Donnie, um, not Donnie, actually, Donnie McClurkin was down there. And Donnie stopped him and said, you have to be related to, to Richard Small. <laughs> you know, well, yeah, that's my brother. <laughs> it's like, so. Everybody was seeing this but me. I was I was just sort of in denial, you know, but thank God that uh, Mama Rosa, who we call her, is still alive and she was the one that told us because if she had died, we would have never got the whole story. She wow. had the entire story. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, once again, thank you for this book. Uh, tremendous book. Really, I mean, to learn about DC, to learn about your career, gospel music, what right. you've been through is just absolutely fantastic. And this tribute concert's coming up. Uh, it's going to be September the 22nd at First Baptist Church of Highland Park with all of the greatest DMV artists to give you absolutely. a tribute that is so, so well deserved. And, um, you know, it's not over, Richard. What What's next? Um, are you going to do any more recording? Someone had mentioned something about you were thinking about a music school. What's coming up? You know, I don't have anything um, concrete um, that's coming up. I'm just so waiting to see what God wants me to do next. You know, um, that's where I am now. You know, I, I, you know, there was so so many years I had to prove myself, and that got so frustrating because you know when I started out, people didn't really get my music. It was too much classical in it. Why is that there? Why is that there? I don't know why I said that's the way I heard it, you know. Uh, and it wasn't. I remember um, Dr. George Butler, who was the, the head of uh, of um, Columbia, the jazz label of Columbia Records, and he said, "This is back in around 19." 60, no, 1972, 73, like that. he said, Richard, you're going to have to wait till the world catches up to you because they're not ready for you. I was like, what? He said, listen, he, he, he was a graduate of Howard, brilliant, 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 brilliant musician and um, just a brilliant mind. And he used to come to Howard when uh, I was there and do lectures and stuff like that. But he said, you got to wait for the world to catch up with you. He said, but when they do, you see it's going to be a difference that you could you would never imagine. You know, so I was like, well, thank you. And almost 10 years to the day was when I got my first record. record. Mm. And so many uh, have tried to get you to go straight to secular music. Donald Byrd and a few mm -hmm. others said, you know, you can do secular, you be, but you stay true to your faith. And what God wanted you to do, and thank you for that. Well, you know, it was, it was you know, I, w I went to second for a, a hot second, but and I've never, I've not, never been a person that, 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 was, that have thought that secular was wrong. I love all kinds of music. I listen to most of it, but when I started with that, it just wasn't comfortable. It didn't feel like it was wrong. It just wasn't. It wasn't me, you know. And I know we were in the studio with. Uh, the late James and Tume, and he was saying, okay, Richard, do it like you do it in church. And I'm like, I can't, I, I'm, I'm not planning, to, whatever I do in church, I'm not planning that. It comes from somewhere else, you know? Um, but, uh, 
you know, I, I, I was there for a hot minute, but I knew this was my home because it, it's always been gospel music. It always has been from the time I was about four or five years old. Well, Richard, get ready, because once Hollywood reads your autobiography, you, there might be a Netflix <laughs> bioptic like the Clark sisters, because right. <laughs> <laughs> you have led quite a life. <laughs> I sure have. come a long way. Yeah. Amen. And, and many, many more years to go. And we thank God for that. So yeah. you stay healthy. And, yeah, I'm trying uh, my best. Huh? I said, I'm trying my best. And thank you so much for this opportunity for being able to spend some time with you and, and, and your sharing of um, your heartfelt sharing of information to us. And thank you for your music ministry and thank you for allowing God to use you to, to minister to us. We're, we're just, I know I am so very thankful for all the music that you have given me the opportunity to play on 96.3 WHUR. Well, Jackie, listen, I appreciate you more than you could ever know for playing me the way you have down through these mm, years. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, that's one thing when people um, ask me about being from D.C., they say, well, they, they support you. I was like, the DMV has supported me since day one. The religious announces, the, um, the um, you know, the audience. I, I could not ask for anything more because it's not often that an uh, artist is sometimes honored in their own home. You know? Right. But thank you and, and the late Patrick Ellis um, that's at my my station that my heart is, you know how it is, is my absolute heart. Uh, and you all, you all have been so um, supportive of me. And I just, I want to thank you personally for being there. I, I really appreciate it. God bless you, Richard. God bless you too, Jackie. I love you so much. Love you too. And 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 if I could just ask you, we normally end these conversations with a prayer. If you could just pray for us, all of us, our audience, uh, so many wonderful people in the chat who love you so, so much. Oh, um, God bless you. Give us a closing prayer and we'll close the conversation. Amen. God, we thank you for another day. We thank you for keeping us through danger seen and unseen, for being there when we didn't even know you were there, to bring us through, to bring us healthy, and, and those who've been had sickness for bringing us out and healing us. Uh, we thank you for your protection. This world now is not the same world I grew up in. There's so much danger around, but God, you've protected us and kept us and we appreciate it. Thank you for your love, for your undying love, for giving us what we need, for providing for us food and shelter, just things we, we take for granted. God, we just thank you. Ask you to bless um, Jackie and WHUR. Thank you for the, the, the music and the blessings they have played over the radio so many, many years and helped so many people. Now continue to bless us and keep us safe. We love you and we give you all the praise and glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Richard. My pleasure, Jackie. My pleasure. Love you. Love you too. Take Thank care you to everybody you. who tuned in today to HUR at Home Inspiration. God bless you. Please be safe out there. We want you back here next Sunday at 6 p.m. on Facebook. YouTube and WHUR.com. And don't forget about Gospel Spirit, 8 a.m. to 11 on 96.3 WHUR. God bless you and thank you.